Hey everybody, welcome to this mini-series on the trails of Bedford. We hope that whether you have a couple of minutes or maybe a few hours, you'll want to get out and see one or two or maybe 12 of the trails that we have right here in town. You can get trail maps online at the Bedford Town Conservation Commission or the Bedford Land Trust website. And we want you to know that this mini-series was made possible by our partnership with BCTV right here in town. Without them, this wouldn't be possible at all. But the conservation trails that we have are also possible because of our community members, the support from folks like you, as well as the Bedford Land Trust, and support from the Bedford Conservation Commission. We're standing at one of the most beautiful trails that we have right here in town, the Pulpit Rock Trail. Behind me, you'll see Gage's Mill that is on one of the trails here. I'm not going to tell you which one, so you can come out and take a look. But this is an absolutely beautiful spot here in town. And this mini-series hopes to tease you with just enough information that you'll come out any time of year, any day of the week if you want. Again, if you have a couple of minutes or a few hours. There is passive recreation that's allowed on our trails. There is no hunting, and dogs definitely should be on leash. But we hope you come out and check it out. What a great way to spend your day, or run out in the morning to get a little bit of exercise. It's free. It's right in your backyard. Come check us out, and please enjoy this little mini-series on the Trails of Bedford. I hope we see you out here. So I'm standing here at the Bedford Heritage Trail, located at the end of Moore's Crossing Road just off of Daniel Webster Highway. This trail is just about under a mile. It has an Eagle Park loop which goes around a small wooded area, and in many cases you probably might see the nesting eagles that live there. It is closed, the trail itself, from December 1st through April 1st to give those eagles a chance uh, through the winter to nest out. When you have a chance, come down and take a look. This trail has a number of picnic areas along the way. Um, it's fairly well graded, so I think you can definitely try to come out with some strollers. And like I said, it's just under a mile. It'll stop at the Bedford uh, pumping station and it takes you behind a number of commercial and residential properties, but it follows along the Merrimack River, so there's definitely plenty to see at this trail. When you have a moment, want to take time out for a little lunch break, any time of day, come out and take a walk here at the Bedford Heritage Trail. It is part of the statewide heritage trail system. We'll talk a little bit more about the trail when we go in and some of the other things that you might see while you're here. Enjoy. All along the Heritage Trail, you're going to find streams like this one and pedestrian bridges. In 2016, the Bedford Conservation Commission won a grant that helped to improve a portion of the trail, if you will, and build out a whole new pedestrian bridge that you're definitely going to find when you're out here. Through community members, commission members, and multiple other types of resources, they were able to get this type of a bridge built out. So when you're out here, take a look around, enjoy it, enjoy your views, and when you get a chance, definitely check out the Heritage Trail right here in Bedford. today at the Benedictine Park, which is located right off of Wallace Road, literally two or three minutes from 101. This 28-acre parcel of land has two trails. The views are absolutely breathtaking. We're going to take a walk in a moment up the hill and show you what we've got. Come out here any time of year. In the winter, you can sled, do a little cross-country skiing, bring your dog, picnic, relax. Just amazing, amazing piece of property. Put into conservation in May of 1999, in, named after its former private owners, the Benedictine Sisters. There's history about this right here at the kiosk at the trailhead. I think you'll really enjoy this spot when you see in a moment what it has to offer you. Let's go. So as you can see, as I mentioned, the views are absolutely amazing and breathtaking. Any time of year, whether you come out in the summer to enjoy the foliage, or if you come out in the winter for snowshoeing, a little winter sledding, or some cross-country skiing, you can see clear to Manchester and beyond. There are two trails out here. One is Perimeter Trail that just follows along the field and I have to say is an amazing workout. And the other one is Cobb Trail, which is a woodland trail that runs parallel to Riddlebrook. It's a neat little scavenger hunt to try to find the trail entrance. And if you get onto Cobb Trail, just follow the yellow blazes. It's an easy, just under a mile trail that is pretty neat to follow along. If you need a trail map, just stop by the town office or visit the Bedford Land Trust website. They definitely have trail maps that you can download. Cross-country skiing, as I mentioned, some sledding. Come out, enjoy a picnic. When it's nice and windy, bring a kite. It's a great place for family, friends, little kids, big kids, even your fur, furry four-legged kids, if you will. 
So I hope you get out to Benedictine Park. Check it out. It is an amazing place right here in Bedford. Hey everybody, we are here at the Pulpit Rock Conservation Area, located in the northwestern part of town. You can get here one of two ways. The first one is the Canard Trailhead that is located off of New Boston Road. You won't see a sign along the road, but you'll definitely find it with the ample parking and probably some cars of people that are hitting the trails for the day. The other side is off of Pulpit Road, which is our Gages Mill Trail, and that takes you to the other side of the conservation area, but the trail systems all connect in the middle. What you'll see when you're here are some really pretty amazing natural resources. I suggest before you head out, make sure you visit the Bedford Land Trust website and print off a trail map, because some of the trails, while they intersect and loop, can be confusing. They are well marked and they are color coded, so you can definitely figure out which trail you might want to hike while you're out here, and you might find yourself just taking on a few extra, because you really might enjoy it when you're here. There is ample parking. Um, on the Canard side of, of the conservation area, there's limited parking off of Pulpit Road. There are no facilities, and we do ask that dogs are leashed. Make sure you prep for your hike, put on plenty of um, insect repellent or tick repellent. There are some picnic tables here, so you can definitely enjoy your day with your family, your little ones, big ones, your fur friends. Come on out and enjoy the Pulpit Rock Conservation Area. It's definitely something you don't want to miss. So we're here at the Pulpit Rock Conservation Area, probably a little over half a mile in on the Canard Trail, which is blazed with white markers. So you really shouldn't be able to get too, too lost out here, but definitely bring a trail map with you, or make sure you check out the kiosk on your way by. We're standing at Pulpit Rock, which is this amazing geological gorge formation that according to local geologist Richard Moore, formed about 14,000 years ago from glacial runoff. For a little bit more information about this, the history of Pulpit Rock, and how this was a very popular tourist attraction in the early 1900s can be found on the Bedford Land Trust website. Pulpit Rock Conservation Area boasts about 10 trails that all loop together, intersect with each other, and also go straight on and on and on into Amherst and even Pulpit Brook Trail that runs up to, or sorry, down to the Joppa Hill uh, Conservation Area, which you'll learn more about in a different segment. So be sure you keep watching to learn more about these beautiful conservation lands that we have in the town of Bedford and some of the recreation trails that you can come out and enjoy on any time of year. Hopefully we see you out here soon. Before we leave the Pulpit Rock Conservation Area, earlier I had mentioned that there are two entrances to the trail system. Right now we're at the Pulpit Road Trailhead entrance, which takes you on to the Gages Mill, or I should say Gages Sawmill Trail. It's a really neat and interesting bit of history that you want to check out. To get there, you would just walk to the right of the kiosk that you see behind me, and the trailhead is right over here. This is a really neat trail that takes you in probably about a little over half a mile. Uh, a lot of downhill, very easy trail, well marked with your white blazes, and a lot of fun. We certainly hope to see you out on these trails soon. We are here at the Joppa Hill Farm Conservation Area. This is a great culmination of efforts for conservation between two towns, the Bedford Town and the Amherst Town. About 312 acres went into conservation in 2001. 120 of those acres sit on the Amherst side and about 190 sit here on the Bedford side. This wonderful conservation area is held in an easement by the Bedford Land Trust and provides opportunities for recreation on the soccer fields, amazing educational opportunities right here at Joppa uh, Education Farm. And then you also have a great trail system right behind us um, that you can access from the farm itself that takes you on about a two mile loop if you follow the Joppa Hill Farm Loop. It is marked by red blazes. You'll probably spend about an hour or so and it'll take you through open fields, beautiful woodland, and if you're so daring, you can branch off and follow the Pulpit Brook Trail that takes you over to Pulpit Rock. Definitely come out, traverse these trails, take a walk on both the Bedford and Amherst side of town. And while you're here, take in a few of the educational sites at the Joppa Hill Farm. 
For more information, please sure, be, be sure you visit the Bedford Land Trust website for a trail map, but also visit the Joppa Hill Educational Farm website for events that are going on around here. We do hope you get out and check out these wonderful conservation areas that we have here in Bedford, especially this one at Joppa Hill Farm. It's, it's definitely a treasure to check out. Enjoy it. We're here at Van Loan Preserve, right down into the heart of Bedford, New Hampshire. We're standing right next to Riddle Brook as well, that runs through part of this property and flows down from Benedictine Park, just across the way. There are two ways that you can access the Van Loan Preserve. You can hit the trailhead that's right across from Benedictine Park off of Wallace Road, or you can try to find the trailhead that's not clearly marked at all, except for a sign across the road off of North Amherst Road. Either way, it still gets you to this beautiful, just under 70 acres of conservation land. The trails, there are a few of them, probably about four, with a new one that was started up in 2016 as a homage, if you will, to, uh, to the Van Loan family. We'd like to talk to you a little bit more about what you're going to see here today. From beaver ponds, beavers themselves, bog bridges, lots of help from our Eagle Scouts in town, our community members, and the land trust, not the least of which who are responsible stewards of the Van Loan Preserve itself. Trail maintenance, stewardship, monitoring, making sure we preserve this beautiful natural habitat for all of us to enjoy. A Little bit of history about the Van Loan Preserve. The Van Loan family donated about 70 acres of conservation easement to the Bedford Land Trust in 2000. Working with the Appalachian Mountain Club, the trails were created, took about seven years, to its final opening in May of 2007. Over time, we've added a couple of trails, which you'll see is Jean's view, we'll go over that. And then in about 2011, the Van Loan family very generously donated the property itself to the Bedford town. Please definitely come out and check out Van Loan. This is a gorgeous piece of property. You can snowshoe, cross country ski, definitely hike, take a stop at a number of the benches that we have around here, take a rest, but it's definitely a, a good hiking spot for here in Bedford. Come out in the winter, come out in the spring, come out in the summer and check out the really nice flowing uh, Riddle Brook that we have behind us. Whatever you do, get out and check out Van Loan Preserve. In November of 2016, the Bedford Land Trust constructed a new trail right here at Van Loan Preserve in celebration of Eugene Van Loan III and in memory of the Van Loan legacy that is left behind for conservation right here in Bedford. This one-tenth of a mile trail right off of the Anna and Pick Loop is a great little jaunt to this beautiful open wildlife and wetland area. When you are out here at Van Loan Preserve, definitely make sure you take a jaunt out. Definitely a must-see. We're here at the Goad Nature Trail located right off of Hardy Road. A rather busy road with very limited parking. So when you come out, just be careful when you cross the road as you enter into Go Nature Trail. This Go Nature Trail is wonderful because it actually sits along the ash bog, which is a um, wetlands of significant value for us here in Bedford. We'll go in and take a look at what you're going to see. It's a really neat little trail. It's about a half mile in and a half mile back. It is not a loop trail. It does have um, bog bridges. Some of them uh, will be in repair, but when you come in, please make sure you wear plenty of insect and tick repellent if you come definitely during the spring and summer seasons. And uh, just check out what this little wetland has to offer for everybody. It is a really neat trail, very easy to get to, very easy to traverse. Let's go. notice that we have some bog bridges here at Goad Trail. Uh, this is you know an occurrence that you see at a lot of our properties in and around town on the, on the trails of Bedford. Um, one of the things that we do want to acknowledge is the the work of, uh, of the Eagle Scouts and our community members that have helped build these bridges over time but maintaining them and keeping them up and replacing them are equally as important. They're out in the elements and they're going to require that. So if you have an interest, if you have a group or you want to volunteer on any given day to come out and help us replace these, let us know. Reach out to us on the Bedford Conservation Commission, or feel free to also reach out to the Bedford Land Trust. We're always looking for helping hands. Thanks.
So while we're near the end of Goad Trail and not to take anything away, we do want you to understand the pristine nature of Ashbog and how beautiful it is. There are so many wonderful, you know, naturally occurring songbirds out here. The aquatic life is amazing. And this has really been brought to conservation from members of our community with work of the commission, um, our, our town of uh, Bedford members. And while Ashbog is abutted by a lot of residential properties, everybody has really done their part to keep it in its natural state. And Goat, Goat's Natural Trail gives you that ability to come out and check it out and just enjoy the amazing beauty of it. We're here at Muller Park, located near Wallace Road. This wonderful 3.6 acres of conservation land gives you a really nice, easy, about a mile of trail to traverse and hike. Anything you can do if you have a little bit of time on the weekend, or maybe just before you have to run off to work, definitely come out and check it out. It's a good place to bring your kids, and a neat place for Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts to try out their outdoor skills. Let's go, let's check it out. The trailhead is very easy to find. It's located right off of North Amherst Road. There's ample parking and a kiosk that provides you some information about the trail itself. Dogs are always welcome on leash, and we do ask that you help keep our conservation nice and clean. There are trash cans available. This is a great place to picnic, hike, spend a couple of minutes, spend an hour. There's a nice little bog. If you wanna come out and take a look for salamander eggs, frogs, you name it. You want to make sure that you follow the red blazes. It's a loop trail and it's something that again you can do very easily on any given day of the week. Come out in the winter time and do some snowshoeing. If you're not sure if you're the hiking type, this is a great trail to start on. Nice and level, nice and easy, and a loop so you don't get lost. Again, very easily marked with our red blazes. Probably the more well-known trail system, the Earl G. Legacy Park, otherwise known as Legacy Park. There are about three miles of trails that you'll find throughout the park. There's a trail map right here behind me at the kiosk, but you can also download or print off the trail map from the Bedford Town website. This is a wonderful trail system that you can come out and hike on, bring your dog. There are a bunch of loops depending on how much time you want to spend while you're out here. Uh, the trails are maintained by the Bedford Cross Country Ski Club. So if you're game, come out in the winter, join the ski club, and uh, take these trails on in the winter time. The trail systems do put you a little bit behind Riddlebrook School, which is right next to us. You can get to Legacy Park and the trail system just, uh, I'd say, a little bit east, uh, sorry, a little bit west of the Wallace Road and New Boston Road Junction. Come out and check it out. It's a wonderful trail system that you don't want to miss. Enjoy it while you're here. So I'm standing here on the second school district easement, located right behind the ball fields and SAU offices off of County Road. This is a great little trail if you're out here catching a game, if you want to practice your cross-country skiing, or if you want to bring a class into the outdoors and see what exists here for, you know, natural state in Bedford. This lovely trail is marked with orange arrows, so it's easy to find once you're in the trail. The trailhead's a little tricky and not well marked, but it is directly behind home plate of the ball field right behind the SAU building. When you have 15 or 20 minutes or you just want to just spend a little more time out here, come out and check it out. It is a loop trail, it's easy to traverse, and on the way to the trailhead itself you're going to walk through some open fields where you will find some beautiful milkweed which are just wonderful for helping our uh, monarch butterflies um, try to continue their legacy here in the state. So again, come on out with your dog, um, your little kids, yourself, you want to just try to get in the outdoors for a few minutes. Check out this uh, second school district easement. It's on about seven and a half acres of land. The easement itself is held by the Bedford Land Trust. So if you have a moment, check out their website too at bedfordlandtrust.org. Get out and enjoy the outdoors right here in Bedford in your backyard. Enjoy it.
bet this uh, spot looks familiar to you, but I bet you didn't know that there's a trail right next to the Bedford High School. I'm located at the intersection of Nashua and County Roads. This one mile trail out and back is easy to traverse. It's not marked or blazed, but it's definitely easy to find and the path is certainly easy to follow. Just under 11, just over, sorry, 11 acres of land, the school district put this trail into conservation to mitigate for the wetlands when the high school was built. If you're a high school student, you just need to get out, take a break from your classes, this is a great trail to do that. Come over with the family, or if you have a school group you want to take out into nature for a little bit, this is a wonderful trail for that. It runs behind the Bedford Bluffs, so in the summertime you'll probably hear the kids having fun. It also traverses behind a few residential properties, so just be mindful of that. But I think you'll be surprised where you come out on the other side, you'll cross a bridge, you'll have a beautiful view of a wetland, and you can come back to where you have plenty of parking here. Get out and enjoy this little SAU trail, hidden but seen right next to the Bedford High School. Come out and enjoy it. We're here at the Waterfowl Sanctuary, located right off of Route 101 near the Amherst town line. This small parcel of conservation land boasts a ton of natural resources. A little bit of a quarter mile loop, definitely high grasses, so we recommend you wear long pants, your high boots. In the springtime, it's pretty wet, so be prepared. There are a number of bog bridges that have been installed and maintained by the Eagle Scouts over the years. On your way in, make sure you check out the bat boxes and do stop and take a look at all the natural resource signs that highlight the amazing resources that are here, from hemlock trees to witch hazel to fiddlehead ferns. Depending on the time of day you come and the time of year, you're bound to see some pretty cool birds flying around too. Keep your ears open and your eyes open. We've seen some deer tracks around lately. I wonder what else we're gonna find. Come check it out. So we're here at the Old Bedford Cemetery located right off of Back River Road. While the cemetery itself is not part of the conservation easement, we'll talk about that in a minute, it is still an amazing piece of history that you want to check out um, when you traverse this next trail that we're going to tell you about. The trail itself is called the Sevens Pond Drive Conservation Easement that was put into conservation um, when the Target and Lowe's was built up to kind of mitigate for the wetlands that were impacted. That particular trail ends pretty much here at the cemetery. You can also access the trail behind me uh, through the broken stone wall, take a sharp left, and try to follow the boundary markers. The trail itself is not blazed, and it's a little bit hard to find the path, but it's still a neat treat to come out and take a look at what we have here in the cemetery, who used to um, traverse our town. You'll see names like the Goths and the Moors. And we have some Revolutionary War veterans that are buried here. So if you love history, especially history about Bedford, definitely come out. There is absolutely no parking, so please be careful. If you do park along Back River Road to come up to check this one out. And like I said, you can access the Sevens Pond Trail right behind me. The other location is off of um, Heather Drive. So if you follow Sevens Pond Drive itself to the junction of Heather Drive, you will see the other trailhead with plenty of parking. You can definitely come out here in the winter time and snowshoe. Passive recreation is allowed. And like I said, this is an amazing treat, a destination that I think everybody should check out just for a little bit of history. So when you get a moment, check out the Sevens Pond Drive Trail. And while you're here, take in a bit of history and totally enjoy yourself. We hope you enjoyed this mini-series on the trails of Bedford. If you want to watch this program in its entirety again, or any portion of it, visit the Bedford Community TV website, or subscribe to their YouTube channel, and you can see any portion of this, of this series. If you are interested in putting your land in conservation, whether it's for hiking or mixed use for recreation and hiking, or just to have it conserved for future generations, feel free to reach out to the Bedford Town Conservation Commission or the Bedford Land Trust. They can work with you. Put a program together and how you want your land to be conserved for the future. So we hope you get, enjoy, we hope you get out. We hope you enjoyed this series. And please make sure you check back as we add more trails and we add more to this series for you to check out, get out in your backyard and just enjoy it out here. Thank you.